Hey, Draft Tribe, Migs here, and I'm with Andrew McCartney. Did I say that right? Right, yes, sir. How are you? Good, how are you? It's always good to see you. I'm doing great. How could I be bad? I know. <laughs> Take a look at this. So this is a McLaren F1, right? Yes, sir. Well, before we even go there, I know you wanted to jump right to the car. Let's talk about you. I'm going to jump to the car. Let's talk about okay. you. Gosh, you Introduce yourself. Me. No, so I'm Andrew McCartney. I'm a product specialist for McLaren North America. I am a car nerd through and through. Uh, I actually got into this industry because of this car, too. So that's a re one of the reasons why we're here. Um, so that was cool. He was like the first one that said, hey, do you want to take a look inside the car? And I said, sure. And he says, anything for Megs. I was, <laughs> of course. Wow. So now I have to buy him like a Coke or something. <laughs> That's off air, though. Well, that's great. Thanks for spending time with us today, doing a little interview. Of Let's course. show us around the car. Yeah, absolutely. This is the second to last road car made, and there's a really interesting history with this car. And I'll go over all the reasons why it's special, apart from it just being an F1. Uh, so this car originally started green, and it lived at the factory for quite a while. Uh, the owner didn't really bring it. He would kind of go there, drive it when he felt like it. It would be serviced under the care of McLaren. The second owner got it. Uh, he had decided to change the color, the body kit. So, and then McLaren had mentioned that they have an extra LM engine available. And would you like to fit it to the car? The owner at that time said yes. So here we have candy orange with the high downforce kit uh, with the vents in the front instead of the LM style vents. A one-off set of OZ wheels, and most importantly, it does have the LM spec engine where it has 680 horsepower. Uh, yeah, yeah. So here, I'm actually going to go to the inside of the car if that's all right. Yeah. So another couple neat details about this car is they did change over some items inside in the interior. So you have kind of almost a Daytona style seats in there. Um, typically when these cars came from the factory, they were in one color for the most part with a bright orange section in the center uh, where Gordon Murray had really wanted your eye to focus on the center of that car. And you can see his signature right in front of the steering or the, the shifter right there in between the steering wheel. So that's Gordon Murray's signature and right above the uh, the VIN plaque there. So with 680 horsepower, it's naturally aspirated. This was an engine. I know. I know, I know. So with 680 horsepower, this is naturally aspirated. It was actually an engine that BMW had made. So when McLaren were trying to make this car initially, uh, they were designing the car, they were looking for a V12 that they could use, and they initially contracted Honda. Uh, Honda had declined, and BMW said that they could probably make it through some contacts that McLaren had had. So they made this 6.1 liter V12 uh, that made far more horsepower per liter than they were initially looking to. Uh, have in the car so it just made it a really one-of-a-kind car and this one being the LM engine the straight pipes it is just an unbelievable example and I got a little special thing over here You want to see the whole deal, don't you? Of course, like yes. Ah, uh, the there, there we go. So there you go. That cold thing there you yeah. Go. All right. Hey, knock yourself out, boy. Thank you very much. That was the difference between a We're running. So some things that a lot of people know about this engine is it has the gold leafing all around the engine bay. And the reason they did that, it was not for flash. That was actually because gold has really great heat properties. It'll really deflect heat. So it doesn't affect the carbon fiber that they used in this car because every single square inch of this car was hand laid carbon fiber. It's not like what they do now where they have computers that can cut it out and mold it and put it into an autoclave and have it done quickly. This really was handmade in every sense of the word. So everything on this car, it took quite a bit of time to make it. And that's because Gordon Murray's idea of this car was really everything had to be absolute and utter perfection. Uh, if I might recommend, if anyone does like the McLaren F1 or is interested in this, check out the book Driving Ambition. If you can find it, find it on eBay, wherever you are. 
it's one of those books uh, in the morning, I'll wake up, I'll have a cup of coffee and I'll read that book just because it's so fascinating to know the history of this car and just all the details on it. Uh, when they first came out, this car didn't really have necessarily a dealer network. So what they did is underneath this panel right underneath here, you could actually connect uh, a laptop computer and talk back with home base and Woking and they could diagnose problems and if it was something that they needed to have a technician fly over from England they could have that done or if they did have someone in the States they would know before they sent someone over if that was necessary. So up on the top here, and it's something that we'll see now, a lot of the big things for LT cars is you'll have the roof scoop. So you have the 675 LT roof scoop car, the 600 LT roof scoop car. Uh, this too has a roof scoop, but I would argue that this one is probably the most wild just because of what's sitting behind it. So when you have that S70 engine back here, it's right above here. You have that V12 naturally aspirated bark, and it's sitting directly above the driver's head. It's just such a feature in this car that makes it just an absolute icon. And of course we have this, we have the F1 LM there, that's LM2 over there. Uh, we have the chassis 27R, the race car, and uh, 14 as well. But So this is a LM2. This is a really special car as well. Uh, because this is something that is usually not seen all that much. And you can kind of see some of the similarities between the two of them here too. With the front bumper, it has a kind of similar shape in there. Uh, both the purpose of this car was to just add more downforce and have it be similar to the GTR, where this car is called the LM because it was in uh, an homage to them winning the 1995 Le Mans race. Uh, it was their first go, and by chance the car that won was chassis 01R. Uh, it was a car that was really kind of a test car. They had done it because they thought, okay, well, let's try it. Let's see how it does. Let's see how this car does in a Le Mans race. And it ended up winning. So you see it has the LM pack there, the GTR wreath, LM V12 on the steering wheel, LM2 on the, uh, the headrest, because you do need a headset in this to communicate to anyone else. And kind of like I had mentioned in the other car, this car is completely original, so it has the bright color in the center seat because as I said before, Gordon Murray wanted everyone to look and notice that this is a center seat car, which is the perfect layout for a sports car. You get perfect vision right in the middle. Uh, everything is focused on the driver all the way surrounded. It's just perfect. A neat little detail on this one too is to just make everything absolutely as light as it can. You'll see even the flooring. It doesn't really have a carpet, but it does have this F1 uh, material down there, this F1 kind of carpeting, if you will, there. So here it has a different covered head, uh, and here it has the, the GTR homage where you see it says 24 hours de Mans, the 24 hours, uh, winner in 1995. It was just a little special thing that they had had there. Andrew, thank you so much for spending time with us today and our viewers over at Drive Tribe. Of course, Appreciate it was my much. pleasure, absolutely, anytime. Excellent, well I'll hold you up on that. <laughs> Until then, we'll see you on Drive Tribe.